evening, citizens, and thanks for tuning in to episode 68 of the Nindy Nation podcast. I'm Jeff, and Nindy Nation is your one-stop shop for everything independently developed for the Nintendo Switch. This week, we're covering all of the active deals and new Nindy releases for June 6th through the 12th. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. Each week, we take a quick look at every new indie game hitting the eShop, and then in our second half, we'll dig through all of the Nindies currently on sale and bring our favorite deals of the week directly to you so that you can get the most bang for your digital bucks and keep your Joy-Cons synced. Every episode is posted in audio format to podcast services on Sunday evening, and on Monday, we publish a video with footage of every game covered over on the Nindy Nation YouTube channel. While you're there, check out the other videos, including the brand new Nindies We Love, covering five of our favorite picks for Nindy Darlings packed with high-octane action coming later this week. For everything else Nintendo-related, check out our friends at the Nintendo Village who are serving up daily content and even more weekly videos and podcasts. You can find everything they do at thenintendovillage.com, and we thank them for their support making Nindy Nation possible. For up-to-the-minute deals, contests for free Nindies, and other general indie game shenanigans, follow us on Twitter at Nindy Nation and let us know what's keeping your Joy-Cons synced. With all of that out of the way, it's time to get into the Nindies. As always, and for whatever reason, Nindies have a tendency to release without any warning or publicity. But we don't want to let those slip through the cracks, so let's kick things off by taking a look at the nine neglected Nindies released since episode 67. A surprising shadow drop that may not technically be a Nindy is Skell Attack, which dropped out of nowhere for $19.99 by Yakuza. I say it isn't technically a Nindy because it was actually published by Konami, which is super weird. But Yakuza is, without a doubt, an independent studio who claims to make quote-unquote AAA indie games, whatever that means. Skell Attack is a charming action platformer where you play as an undead skeleton warding off humans from invading the underworld, and it contains all of the running, jumping, hacking, and slashing you'd expect, along with some exploration and all kinds of traversal and combat abilities to unlock. Skell Attack has been receiving very positive reviews and looks like quite the treat, boasting a witty narrative and forgiving checkpoint system which makes Skell Attack a title fit for players of any age or skill level. SC Ovalex Soft is a developer we've only seen a couple of times in the past, but this week's release of Taxi Sim 2020 looks like it could offer a bit of simple, fun driving for $14.99. As the title suggests, you take the wheel of a taxi in cities such as Miami or New York and must adjust your driving style to suit the preferences of your passenger. It's basically a slow-down, simulation-focused version of Crazy Taxi, just, you know, without the crazy. Or the offspring. I'm sure that little clip will get me flagged on YouTube, but whatever. (laughs) And I guess after all of their hard work on the game engine, they just couldn't stop there. So Ovalex Soft repurposed the taxi game as a drag racing game with Drag Sim 2020 for $9.90. I guess if you're all about driving in a straight line, then this is the game for you? Anyone? No? Okay, moving on. Match is the next overpriced minimal effort mobile port by the consistently laughable publisher Sabek, which released for $9.99. They describe this Match 3 puzzle game by saying, Simply clear all fruits of the same color and try to cause a chain reaction for that mind-blowing victory. (laughs) Mind-blowing, huh? Not so sure about that one. And Winterworks is back at it again, porting free mobile games meant for toddlers over to the Switch for 5 bucks, and this one is called Animal Pairs, matching and concentration game for toddlers and kids. Guess I don't really need to explain that one any further. The next game that you're definitely not going to buy, and I'm definitely not going to recommend, is Digital Game Group's Pop the Bubbles, which released last week for a staggering $7.99. It's a ripoff of Bust a Move, or that mobile game that used to be really popular whose name is currently escaping me. It's not Bejeweled, it's not Candy Crush, it's one of those. But this time, their Bust a Move ripoff is set in an underwater world that is a total ripoff of The Little Mermaid, but with an art style that is just abysmal. Rip off the ripoff game. 
Boombit Games ported their mobile title Coast Guard Beach Rescue Team and slapped a $12 price tag on it. Now I could see for maybe a dollar this game could be kind of fun for kids as you drive around in vehicles such as jeeps, fire trucks, and boats doing various Coast Guard tasks, but it's way too expensive and they checked off my biggest nindy pet peeve by leaving all of the on-screen controls from the mobile game intact, proving that they are really just out there looking for a quick buck. Or 12. Okay, our last two neglected nindies are, at the very least, real video games and not just cheap mobile port cash grabs. That's saying something, I guess? Ridge Force Redux is a side-scrolling shoot-'em-up by HeadUp Games and Com8 Com1 that looks pretty decent and is accompanied by a variety of environments and ship upgrades. Unfortunately, you already know that there's no shortage of solid shmups on the Switch, and launching with an alarmingly high price of $18 means this title is probably destined to be lost to the bowels of the eShop. And finally, we have a game that I can get behind. Remnants of Nizeth is a kinetic action platformer entirely built around a grappling hook mechanic by developer and publisher Tolga for $9.99. While categorized as an action platformer, it really looks more like a speedrunner or an on-foot racing game as it's all about how fast you can swing your way through each level. It includes a level editor and the ability to share or download levels built by other players in the community, and as the wrap to last week's neglected nindies, it looks like a pretty fun time. So there are a couple of games here worth considering, like Skell Attack or Remnants of Nizeth, but more and more, we're just seeing the same publishers push out the same janky mobile ports every week that nobody wants. At Nindy Nation, we want to make sure we're covering every weekly release and shining a light on independent developers, but I want to ask you, citizens, should we keep this up and have some fun poking at these garbage shovelware games, or should we tighten up the podcast and overlook games from publishers like Sabek? Let me know in the YouTube comments or on Twitter at Nindy Nation. Now it's time to look to the next week of brand new Nindies, and we've got a nice variety of titles to check out, with more than a few that I think are going to be worth your time. Here are the 17 Nindies releasing on the eShop from June 6th through the 12th. Developer Qubit Games gets the new releases started on June 6th with a title that has me more conflicted about a recommendation than I've been in quite a while. Their title, Super Hollow Bunny's Pause Cafe, is kind of like three games in one. An auto-running platformer, a boss rush that's kind of like cuphead bosses in the style of Mega Man, and then to a much lesser extent, a multiplayer fighting game. Super Hollow Bunnies looks like they built the structure of a solid game, and it seems like they totally nailed the boss battle portions. You gotta see these, they look like an absolute blast. But the core of the game, the auto-running platformer, seems to be needlessly challenging because of level design that probably could have used a bit more time in the oven. Otherwise, the artwork and animation is great, and the dynamic grunge soundtrack is right up my alley. I agree with other outlets who claim this title seems like it's got some wasted potential, but then again, Qubit released what looks like a pretty meaty game for only five bucks, so maybe they realize that and just want to get some sales in so that they can build a sequel. Tough call with this one for sure, but I think I'm going to pick it up and see for myself and maybe make a video to share later. The other title dropping over the weekend on June 6th is by Overgames with a Z. You know, for that extra layer of extreme. <laughs> Potata Fairy Flower is a charming puzzle platformer with presentation built around Irish folklore and hand-drawn artwork that is very storybook-like. Half of what I've seen so far looks like a simple title I'd recommend to younger players, and the other half looks like it's fit for only those looking for a challenge, so the game feels a bit at odds with itself. The initial price is the always odd $12 even, but that usually means it will be going on sale quite a bit, so I would say throw this one on your wish list, and if a storybook puzzle platformer is up your alley, we'll let you know when it's on sale again. Quick side note, by the way, you hear me say that a lot on this podcast, put one in your wish list and wait for a sale, so it should be noted that whenever I say that, I'm actually adding all of those titles to a massive ongoing list that I have to compare to weekly eShop deals. Any game recommended on Nindy Nation in the past will almost certainly be mentioned in a future episode when it's on sale with a reasonable discount. So don't worry, I got your back, citizens. Anyways. 
Tuesday, June 9th sees a trio of new releases, starting with Jump King by relatively unknown Yukio Publishing for $12.99. Actually, the official title of this game is Tactical Leaping Adventure Jump King There is a Smoking Hot Babe at the Top, which, I don't know. It's funny, but there are so many of these Hot Babe references in the description itself. It seems like the game's just trying too hard, which is a shame because the humor that I do see within the game itself looks pretty clever. So Jump King is a challenging platformer, but all of your mechanics involve you moving up from the bottom of the forest through a bunch of hand-drawn worlds to the very top of a tower where, I guess the babe lives. There's a lot here that I like, but I'm not sure the $12.99 price point is justified, so let's also put this one on the wish list and reserve the babe saving for another day. Next up is one that I'm pretty excited about as well, as it is the third installment in a trilogy of titles from developer and publisher Diabolical Mind and Cowcat, respectively. After releasing the Nindy Trifecta's Xenon Valkyrie Plus and Riddled Corpses EX, one of which being an action platformer and the other an arcade shooter, this third title is a dungeon crawler set in the same world called Demon's Tier Plus, and you know what that means. Demon's Tier Plus is a top-down dungeon crawler with procedurally generated levels, roguelike mechanics, and RPG elements. If the quality is anything like the last two releases, you can expect a pretty decent setup that's overall a bit rough around the edges, but a fun experience meant to challenge you and encourage replayability nonetheless. At 10 bucks, Demon's Tier Plus is a solid pickup, as are Riddled Corpses and my personal favorite, Xenon Valkyrie. Reco Technology! Sorry. Whenever a developer insists on using all capital letters in their name, I feel the need to exclaim it like Ron Burgundy. So, RECO TECHNOLOGY releases a turn-based strategy game with a deep narrative and significant polish this week with their title, 1971 Project Helios, for 40 bucks. As a band of eight unlikely heroes forced to work together towards a similar purpose, you will make your way across a frozen wasteland searching for a doctor for some reason that's not defined, and will focus much more on stealth and close combat than vehicles and guns. It's definitely a pricey one, but Project Helios is quite appealing. Moving ahead to June 11th and the big Thursday drop this week, Kairosoft kicks things off by releasing another port of the same mobile time waster, this one called Magazine Mogul. <laughs> and get this, after seeing these releases almost every one of the past 67 episodes of Nindy Nation, they've actually upped the price from $12 to $14. <laughs> I feel like they're taunting me at this point. Remember, citizens, don't buy Kairosoft games. Crunching Koalas brings what is part of a three-way tie for this week's pick of the week with their retro first-person shooter Project Warlock. Are you a fan of 90s shooters like Quake, Duke Nukem, Serious Sam, and the like? Well, then you're gonna love this one. Built in a similar style, but with a cool cell-shaded approach, you travel through over 60 levels across just about every type of geometry and time period you can imagine, upgrading your character across a vast skill tree along the way. Developers Buckshot Software seem to really know their source material and have made a love letter for fans of these classic shooters. I really can't wait to dig into Project Warlock myself, and all of this content for 15 bucks seems right on the money. Digerati publishes a collection of two of their previous Jigsaw puzzle games that I can only say seem geared toward the, uh, highbrow puzzle fan, if that's a thing. Glass Masquerade 1 and 2 are stained glass puzzle collections with surprisingly high presentation quality, and you can pick them both up in the new collection for $21.99. I do really feel like they missed an opportunity, though, to call this the Glasquerade Collection. Evans Remains by Matthias Schmeid is a $7 mystery thriller puzzle adventure about finding a missing boy named, you guessed it, Evan. The game combines logic-based platform puzzles with visual novel-style narrative inspired by Japanese graphic adventures, and I just read all of that almost verbatim from their website. <laughs> it's got a bright pixel art style that makes it definitely not look like a thriller, but I'll certainly take their word for it. 
Seriously, the combination of the name Ancestor's Legacy and the picture of some righteous Viking-looking dude with a bloody axe makes this title by Destructive, Destructive Creations, Creations just seem completely void of creativity, or maybe they used it all up for the game itself and couldn't think of a good name. Let's see. It's a medieval real-time strategy game, doesn't look too bad, but oh boy, when it gets close to the characters, <laughs> it almost looks as if they forgot to load a layer of textures. Okay, you can play as Vikings, Anglo-Saxon, German, or Slav, and the campaign is inspired by historical events. That's pretty cool. But oh my, it's $36? Eh, gonna say pass on this one, unless games like Wargroove and Bad North with their more cartoony art style just don't do it for you, and you need something that looks, uh, realistic for a 2004 PC title? Sorry guys. Okay, this next strategy entry is much more my style. On June 11th, P-Cube releases Warborn for a much more respectful 1999, and it looks a lot like Advance Wars or maybe even Shining Force, but with anime mechs, and that is totally rad. Turn-based strategy on a grid with somewhat grounded anime mech combat, you know, it doesn't look too outrageous if that's even a thing for mech combat, and it includes a bunch of modes, a level editor, online multiplayer, and a beefy campaign. Yeah, if strategy is what you're looking for this week, I would say Warborn is the game for you. And next up is, oh, that was the last game for the Thursday drop. I mean, we've still got games on Friday, but that was a pretty small Thursday lineup. Where are you at, Nindies? On June 12th, Eclipse Games, a publisher-developer I have yet to see on the Switch, drops an arcade combat racer that actually looks awesome. Super Toy Cars 2 is basically micro-machines or Hot Wheels with rocket launchers and a little bit of burnout crash mechanics, and it all looks really smooth in motion. Not gonna lie, I'm really impressed with what I'm seeing here. We don't really get too many solid racers here in the land of Nindies. There's a career mode with over 20 cars and upgrades to unlock for each one. The stages are varied and creative. Yeah, this looks great. Let's see how much this sucker costs. $9.59. Wow, Super Toy Cars 2 could absolutely be a racer worth checking out. I want to get my hands on this one. Okay, this next release gets mad props to the team at Rust Zero Games. So, the title is Rogue Robots, a twin-stick shooter with customizable robots, so you're already speaking my language, even if the title doesn't seem too intent on turning the genre on its head. But it's this part of their game's description that really got me. The developer says, From the makers of Drunk Foo and Spareware, we're here to introduce to you the sequel of Spareware. But wait, wasn't Spareware quite... quite... And then the developer lists the following quotes from reviews of their previous game. Extremely simple with limited mechanics and highly repetitive gameplay. An okay shoot 'em up no more, no less. I quickly found myself becoming bored. The presentation of the game is relatively basic. And the developer continues from there. And that's why it's no longer even spareware. Dear people and aliens, here comes Rogue Robots. Build your annihilating robot and blast your way through the humanity that's destroying the wonderful planet of Earth. And they continue from there to outline the four-player co-op, customizable weapons, online play, and so forth. I love their admission that the last game was lacking and how they're addressing it. Rogue Robots launches on June 12th for $14.99, but even with what I mentioned above, that does seem a tad high for this release. However, I'm going to ask him for a code and try it for myself, so follow me on Twitter at NindyNation if you want to see how it pans out. Good old Nestor Yavorsky, maker of clever yet simple puzzle games. You've done it again, old chap. And this one's only 19 cents. It's called Dots and is another abstract puzzle game like we always see from Nestor. This one requires you to capture your opponent's dots by surrounding them with your own. And, you know, like I always say, these games are so tough to explain, but they're all pretty solid. I should ask Nestor which one of them he thinks we should recommend as a first for his style of games. Nestor, if you're listening, let me know. I will say though, at 19 cents, Dots is probably at least worth a try. Room 710 Games is another Nindy newcomer, and their first Switch title this week is Half Dead, a sci-fi room puzzle game based on a fictional TV show. Very Black Mirror of them. You can go it alone or with a friend in split-screen co-op, and basically you're dropped into a series of claustrophobic rooms full of traps and have to find your way out. It's only $4.49, which does seem about right from what I can see. Might be worth a shot if this is your bag. 
And lastly, the other two contenders for this week's Nindy Nation Pick of the Week could not be any more different, and they both come from publishers we've come to know well here on Nindy Nation. First up is, dare I say, Ultimate Games, back for the third week in a row with a game we recommend. If you told me even a month ago that I'd be recommending so many of their titles, (laughs) I'd never have believed you, but here we are. I really want to talk to them about what changed over there. I respect the hustle to up their quality of releases. This week's release for June 12th has been quite the hit on Twitch recently, and that's the $25 House Flipper, an admittedly janky title where you play as an investor, shop and buy a house, and then go through them to fix it up in a mode that's part resource management and part physics sandbox, and then of course you sell the house for, hopefully, a profit. If you yourself are into flipping real estate or you love watching those types of TV shows, then this one's a no-brainer. If you're on the fence, there are plenty of streamers who play this title regularly, and I suggest looking up a guy named Ed Placencia who streams and is part of the Married to the Games podcast. I'll put a link in the YouTube description, but his videos for this game alone have sold me on it. And finally, we're back with good old Dragius Games, the publisher that used to be hit or miss, but even more so than Ultimate Games, has really been cranking out solid releases recently. Their title for this week is Pewpa for only 7 bucks. It's a twin-stick shooter with a bigger focus on exploration and scavenging than we usually see in this genre, and the kicker is, well, as the game's tagline says, you and your dog are the lone survivors of a zombie apocalypse. Keep it that way. Who wouldn't want to ward off waves of zombies with your best friend and a near-infinitely upgradable machine gun? I love it. As a recap, this week's pick of the week is a three-way tie between Pewpa, a twin-stick shooter, House Flipper, a, uh, house flipping game, and Project Warlock, a love letter to classic 90s first-person shooters with some modern touches. If that mix doesn't make you love indie games, <laughs> I don't know what will. Are you picking any of these up? Let me know on Twitter, at Nindy Nation. And before we get into this week's deals, a quick apology from me. I gushed and gushed about Cosmic Star Heroin demanding your purchase last week, and yet, even though the site listed the game at a buck seventy-nine last week, within hours of the podcast episode publishing, the sale was taken down, and I still have no idea why. I guess the good news is that this is the first time that's happened to us, at least to my knowledge, and we're 68 episodes in, but it was infuriating to see and I know I let many of you down, so I just wanted to apologize for that and I hope it doesn't happen again. On a positive note, I saw a bunch of you picked up Horizon Chase Turbo while it was crazy cheap, and I hope you're loving it just as much as I do. Anyways, remember a couple of weeks ago when a bunch of eShop deals expired and I assumed we'd be getting a big wave of great new deals? Well, that took a couple of weeks, but it's here now, and there's a bunch of new Nindies that are on sale through June 14th. Without further ado, if this week's new releases missed the mark for you, or if you're pinching your digital pennies, you're in luck because there are 446 games currently discounted on the eShop, and of all of those, these are our picks for the best Nindy deals from June 6th through the 12th. With its dark tones and intense drum and bass soundtrack, Thumper has been best described as a horror rhythm game. In my experience, the Switch has been the best place to play it, and it's currently 75% off for 5 bucks. The Trine series almost always seems to be on sale. This gorgeous series focused on puzzle platforming in a world of fantasy frequently takes a seat in the Great Deals tab on the eShop, but right now the original trilogy are all enjoying a 70% discount making the first three entries $4.49, $5.09, and $5.99 respectively. Be sure to check these out before diving into the recently released final chapter. When Ski Lifts Go Wrong is a quirky little physics game that's always fun for a laugh, and within this genre is one of the more structured titles that actually feels like a game rather than just a sandbox. And 90% off for only a buck 49, you'll definitely get your money's worth out of When Ski Lifts Go Wrong. One of my favorite multiplayer games is Runbo. If Smash Brothers was a foot race featuring a roster of beloved indie game characters, this would be it and it supports up to eight players. It's accessible for anyone and always a great time with even two people sitting on the couch. At 80% off, pick this one up for $2.99 just to have ready to go for the next time you're having friends over for some game time. 
I feel like I recommend 99 Vitas all the time, but here we are again because 99 Vitas is one of my favorite brawlers available. And if what you're looking for is a traditional arcade experience for up to four players that can be completed in about an hour, 99 cents, a 90% discount, is nothing for this game that is so much fun and highly replayable. Runner 3 has seen some mixed reviews compared to the first and the immaculate sequel, but I really enjoyed it regardless of the change in art style and dynamic camera angles. Either way, with Runner 3 currently seeing a 93% discount, this rhythm-based platformer is an easy recommendation for only a buck 39. If you're a fan of vertical shoot-'em-ups, and especially if you prefer them in the arcade, the Vasara collection brings two of the best unknown entries from the early 90s that the genre has to offer. Throw in multiple new characters, four-player co-op, an easy mode for newcomers, and a 90% discount? And there's a ton to love here for only 99 cents. And the game that cemented the physics sandbox genre was Goat Simulator. And over the years, it has seen four enormous expansions which culminated in last year's Switch release of Goat Simulator the Goaty Edition. <laughs> if you could use a little mindless hilarity in your life, this bundle is currently 75% off for only $7.49. Astro Bears is a silly little party game I usually wouldn't recommend because I don't particularly love it, but I know it does have a small yet very vocal fan base, and it's seen a bunch of content additions over the last year or so. Not only that, but it's 93% off for only 99 cents right now, so if you're finally starting to have people back over, Astro Bears is a pretty decent pick and will be easy for non-gamers to pick up and play as well. And last but certainly not least, in fact, this is definitely the best game on this list, is Axiom Verge, which, when I shared this pick on Twitter as one of the best yet commonly overlooked nindies, it received hundreds of likes and retweets. Don't let the 8-bit graphics fool you. Axiom Verge, a title wholly developed by one person, Thomas Happ, is among the best Metroidvania games available, and probably the one that's closest in theme to the Metroid series. It looks a lot like the original Metroid, but plays much more like Super Metroid. If you have ever considered Axiom Verge, now is the time to jump in while it's almost half off for only $11.99. And there you have it, three picks of the week, a bunch of games we missed but didn't really miss, a great week of new nindies ahead and some solid deals to boot, I'd say we're just about done here. If I missed anything, let me know in the YouTube comments below or on Twitter at Nindy Nation. Speaking of YouTube, that's where you'll find a video of every Nindy Nation podcast episode, complete with footage of each game that we cover. But there's a bunch more on the Nindy Nation YouTube channel, too. There's Let's Plays galore, and my favorite content to make is our Nindies We Love series, where we get to dig into a few games that are currently keeping our Joy-Cons synced. And there's a brand new entry coming this week that's all focused on some of our favorite action games. If you like what we do on YouTube, please like, subscribe, and all of that other good stuff. It means a lot and really helps us reach more fans of indies. If you're looking for stuff besides Nindies, well, you're in luck because Nindy Nation is brought to you by the Nintendo Village, and these fine folks are churning out fantastic content including daily news, features, and reviews, as well as weekly podcasts and shows on their own YouTube channel. You can find them on Twitter at Village Nintendo, and all of their content is available in one place at the NintendoVillage.com. The Nintendo Village was instrumental in getting Nindy Nation off the ground, and we thank them for their support. And of course, I thank you for watching and listening. As always, the audio podcast hits the podcast feeds on Sunday night, and on Monday, you can find the video version on YouTube. There's a lot to play this week, and we've got some exciting content just around the corner, so stay tuned on Twitter at Nindy Nation for updates as soon as new content goes live. With that, we're all done here for this week, but I'm always checking and replying to comments on YouTube, and I'm always on Twitter, so let's keep the conversation going. Thanks again for watching or listening. Until next week, I'm Jeff, this has been Nindy Nation episode 68, and you can call these Nindies, you can call them indie games, or you can just play your favorites regardless of who develops and publishes them. But no matter what, we'll be right here, singing the praises of games from independent developers that we love and doing everything we can to help you find just the Nindy to keep your Joy-Cons synced.